Welcome to the Tricks and Tips Life in Salt Lake City presentation. Uh, everyone attending this presentation should generally be starting in the fall semester. So fall 2024. First of all, congratulations on being accepted to the University of Utah. Um, well, let's go ahead and get started. My name is Miles Thacker, and I'm the program manager for International Student Support, David Eccles School of Business. A little bit about me. I lived in Columbia for about four years and worked with Education USA. So I supported Colombians preparing for life in the United States. I also helped students coming from the United States to Colombia and preparing them to adapt into culture into Colombia as well. And I supported uh, multiple scholars coming to Colombia and going to the US, uh, supporting them with applications to universities as well. Right now, I work as a program manager. I have worked at the University of Utah for about four years now um, as an academic advisor, supporting students and many international students. Today, we have uh, a wonderful group of people joining us to answer your questions. We have Hannah, who's an academic advisor for undergraduate. We have Austin Hendrickson, who's a director of student services, Tiffany, um, who's an international student advisor. And then uh, later this evening, we'll have Karen join us. So if you have questions, you can feel free to put them in the chat and we have an awesome team to answer your questions today. Uh, thank you, Austin, Hannah, and Tiffany for, for helping out. Uh, the agenda today, we're going to talk about geography and climate, some typical holidays you'll see in the United States, cultural tendencies to be aware of, transportation specifically pertaining to Salt Lake, um, some communication tips with your peers and professionals, legal norms in Utah and in the U.S., a little bit about food in the United States, how to, so how to find housing, how to find daily items, where to shop, and uh, we will finish with some campus resources. So geography and climate. We are located in the Mountain West. So we're pretty high up, um, about 4,000 something feet, 4,200 feet about. Um, so we are up in a valley in the mountains. It's semi-dry, arid desert. You can see that little red spot. That's Utah in the United States. Uh, so when traveling, people sometimes people will ask me, what's the weather like in the United States? Well, the United States is a huge country. So it really depends on where you are. If you're further north, it'll be, you know, a bit colder during the winter time. If you're further south, it'll it'll get warmer. If you're up in the mountains, it can be a bit cooler. Um, and the landscape's different. So we are mountain west, and we have four marked seasons. We have summer, which is right now. Um, you all will be arriving in August during the heat of the summer. So prepare for some nice warm weather when you arrive. Um, then fall will start in September to December. If you see that picture at the bottom, that's fall in Utah, and that's Mount Timpanogos. It's the Alpine Loop. It's really a great spot to see the fall colors. I highly recommend it when you're here to go somewhere close by and check out the fall colors. Winter is December. To March. Um, it does get pretty cold. It snows. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later, how to prepare for the cold. And then spring is from March until June. 
So there's a lot to do in Utah, and Utah is most famous for its skiing. We also have the Sundance Film Festival in Park City. And there are tons of national parks really close by. We have Canyonlands, um, Goblin Valley, uh, Arches down here, Zion National Park. Um, again, I would recommend visiting if you have the time. There are some trips through the university, um, through outdoor adventure recreation. And holidays. So there are a lot of holidays listed here. We have Pioneer Day, which is very specific to Utah, Labor Day. Um, we do have fall break in October and spring break in March. Most of you will have that about a week off. Um, but some of you won't. Some master's programs, you will not have a fall or spring break. If you have a program which finishes in a year, um, it's, it's likely you won't have that break. Um, then we have Thanksgiving, we have New Year's, Martin Luther King Day, Easter. Um, there's a few pictures over to the right, and these are some of um, some marked holidays that you'll see a lot of different items in the grocery stores that show that the holiday is coming up. Uh, at the top there is Valentine's Day. You see all of those little hearts. That's um, appreciation for friends and family. It's a day of love. Uh, that's in February. Then that middle one is Thanksgiving. And that's where we have a lot of family and food we you'll have at least two days off for that um, i highly recommend if you can join a group of friends or family on that day it's always on a thursday um, and try out the food it's very typical of the united states um, anywhere you are in the u.s so i would recommend um, trying to join a family or friends during that holiday and Halloween is really big here. Uh, we, a lot of people go out on the weekends, get dressed up. Uh, Utah is known for its haunted houses. Um, so you can go check out haunted houses, get dressed up, hang out with friends, and, and so on. Cultural tendencies. Now, I could do an entire presentation on this, but we just have one slide. So I'll just briefly go over a few things. Um, a lot of you are coming from many different countries with a lot of different cultural customs. Um, so I can't go over all of the cultural customs that, that you all are used to, but I can talk about the cultural customs in the U S, um, that I'm very familiar with. So in general, uh, greetings, when you greet someone in a professional manner, you'll do a handshake. Uh, if it's with a friend, you can do give a hug. Um, and just a heads up, in general, Americans enjoy a lot of personal space, usually about three feet um, apart from one person to the other, whether you're talking. Uh, or, for example, I take the train, and it's very interesting to me that People don't sit right next to each other because they prefer their personal space. They want that three feet from themselves to another person. Um, not to say that you can't sit next to somebody else on the train because I do and I can always find a spot. But in general, um, Americans prefer their personal space. And a bit about money. People from the US generally, we don't talk about money. So how much you earn, how much you pay for your apartment, how much you bought your car for, um, unless someone asks kindly uh, just so, so they have a good reference. But in general, um, money isn't usually talked about along with politics, but that would be a different presentation. And when you're out, uh, be expected to pay for yourself. So when you go out with friends and coworkers, you'll generally pay your exact bill. So, you know, whatever drink you got and whatever 
food that you got, you kind of add those up together. It's a, it's a bit of math, but um, unless someone specifically invites you, you'll be paying for yourself. And in the U.S., it's more common to use credit cards and debit cards over cash. So m make sure you have a card. And it is difficult for uh, the restaurants to split up the bills multiple ways sometimes, um, which is why we have this wonderful app. There's Venmo. There's also another one called Cash App um, where you can pay your friends directly. And in the U.S., tipping is expected. It's expected in restaurants, bars. When you take a taxi, your hairstylist, really any kind of service that you're paying for, you'll want to give a 15 to 20 percent tip. Um, and that is expected in the U.S. So when you're going out to eat, um, just remember the price of the food. You're going to be paying 10 to 15. 20% or 15 to 20% more than what you're actually paying for the food. So it does add up. Um, also, all of these apps and links that I'll be mentioning, I'm actually going to share it with everyone um, right now in the webinar. Uh, so you all have that. Oh, I sent it again. So um, yeah, you have all of those resources there. Um, so any link or application that I'm referencing, you can open up that reference page and use that for yourself. Punctuality, this is a big one. Um, so like I mentioned before, I lived in Colombia and it was okay if a meeting started 20 minutes late, um, if a friend showed up 30 minutes late. And it made sense in Colombia. There was a lot of traffic. Um, there wasn't really a schedule for the bus system. There was no train. Um, but in the U.S. and in specifically in Salt Lake, there's not too much traffic. And you can usually plan ahead of time and get to where you need to go on time. And a good phrase for punctuality is, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. So even if you show up right when a class is starting, the door might already be closed. And when you open it, um, it might be a little awkward. And people might, might look at you and you can even lose points um, in your class, uh, which can bring your down, grade down uh, if you show up late enough. So it's good to show up early, especially to your classes on the first day, because it is a bit hard to find. So I'd give yourself like 30 minutes before you get to campus so you have time to look for your class. Transportation, again, all of these links are in that handout. Um, we have public and road transportation, which is the tracks. And um, the we also have a bus line. Uh, it is pretty good. We have the red line, which goes right to the university. Um, it has two stops at the university. I use it, um, and it works very well. You will have free access to that using your student ID card, and that will be effective two weeks before classes start. So when you show up, uh, I know you can show up a month before classes start. Uh, you'll need to wait two weeks until you get your ID. You can come to campus and get that, um, and then that will be active, and you can take the train. Uh, you can also travel by car, so you can purchase a car. Your ID or your driver's license should be valid six months, and then you'll need to go to the DMV, which um, is a government-run institution here. You'll probably need to wait in line for a while, um, and you'll need to take a test to get your new ID. You can also take 
Uber or Lyft, which are taxi services. And these are applications you can download on your phone. They are very useful. Um, I wouldn't use them all the time because that adds up. It can be pretty expensive, but I would definitely have those applications downloaded and on hand um, because it is likely you'll use them at least a few times. We also have uh, scooters that you can rent if you have the application for them. You download the application and you scan it and then I think you pay per minute or per mile. It kind of depends on the company. And bicycles. So Salt Lake is pretty bicycle friendly. There are a lot of bike lanes and you can get bicycles in a lot of different places. Bike shops are usually pretty expensive. Um, getting them used is good if you know a bit about bicycles. If you don't, um, you might get a lemon or a bike that won't work too well for you. I highly recommend the Bicycle Collective. They sell bikes there for a very affordable price. If you have no money and you need transportation, you can also volunteer and get a bicycle for free. So you also have that link in the handout as well. Going long distances. Um, I recommend traveling by air. The United States is very big and um, the bus system and the train system is not super effective. I know that in Colombia, the, the bus system was, was very effective and there were a lot of buses that ran multiple times in the day and you could go to multiple cities. Um, in the U.S. it's not as common to travel by bus, but we do have a bus. We have Greyhound. We also have a train Amtrak. And now the Amtrak, it, I think it takes like a day, a full day to get to Denver. Um, whereas driving, it should take about eight hours. And in a plane, it takes about an hour. And honestly, it's cheaper to fly than to even drive. Um, so yeah, in general, people fly. Um, a good way to search flights is Google flights. You can do a bunch of different filters. Usually uh, the first flights that pop up are the least expensive flights. So I generally use Google flights. You can also use Kayak. Hopper is a really good application um, if you're tracking a flight. like. Let's say you're going back to Asia to visit your family or um, South America, and those tickets are really expensive. So you want to know uh, when the cheapest time to buy your ticket would be, and Hopper tracks that. And then just a list of budget airlines um, that fly out of Salt Lake City Airport. We have Southwest. Airlines, we have Frontier and we have Spirit. Um, you'll also see this picture of the plane uh, up top. That is Delta, and there's a Delta hub out of Salt Lake City. It's not a budget airline, but it's a good one. So many of you are probably thinking about what you're going to do when you arrive as far as a phone plan. Um, it is a bit different in the U.S. compared to a lot of different countries. Um, the most popular type of plan in the United States are prepaid plans. So you pay monthly and you sign a contract for usually two years. And the prepaid plans are Verizon, Sprint, AT&T, and T-Mobile. You pay... Uh, a pretty good amount around 50 70 dollars a month but that includes a phone so you're paying off your phone and you're paying for the service you also have pay as you go so you might be more familiar with this they give you just the chip so you'll have your own phone if you already have a phone you like or you prefer to buy the phone um, when you arrive and save some money and just get the chip uh, a few companies are Mint Mobile and uh, Visible. So um, those usually can get sent 
within a day, 24 hours. So you could get that ordered the day before you come, depending on where you're staying. Um, and it will get shipped within 24 hours. It's not like a lot of other countries where you can go to a gas station or the supermarket and buy a phone chip. You actually have to order it and get it sent to you. But it functions very, very similarly to um, other countries when you just get the chip. Uh, but you'll pay a month by month price and you'll pay as you go. International calling, Skype, uh, that, that's kind of an older application, but it still works. They charge you a small amount for international calling. Um, WhatsApp is pretty common, used by most people. Uh, so download the WhatsApp. Um, you can do video calls. You can chat with your friends overseas, whatever you need to do. And this is kind of a cool little hack. You can use Google Phone to save your phone number. So if you have a phone number in your home country and you don't want to lose that phone number, uh, I think you pay a small fee, maybe $10 or $20, and you can move your phone number to the Google Phone application. And then you can continue to receive calls and text messages through the Google Phone application. So if you want to save your phone number, I would uh, set that up maybe a week or so before you leave. Um, also, just to let you know, when you arrive in the Salt Lake City Airport, there is free Wi-Fi. Um, you can just go right into your phone. I think it's called Airport Wi-Fi, and you can hook up to the Wi-Fi for free. So you can still get a cab. You can still contact um, people when you arrive whether that's um, people who live in Salt Lake or your home or your family back home, uh, you will have access to internet as soon as you arrive. Um, with text messages, just a heads up, uh, in the United States, we use iMessage and the text message that comes with your phone more so than WhatsApp or other applications. So just be aware of that. Um, when you meet professionals, especially at the university, such as professors or staff, you are going to contact them by email. Um, we usually don't share our personal phone number or uh, connect on Facebook. Now, if you want to connect with somebody through a social application, you can use LinkedIn. But in general, Facebook and Instagram are off limits for professional contacts. Legal norms in the US. Uh, looks like I spelled federal wrong. Anyways, there are state laws and there are federal laws. So there are laws pertaining to each individual state. Uh, so our state is Utah. And we have very specific laws here, but then there are also laws pertaining to the entire country. Um, but in general, like I mentioned before, if you're going to drive, uh, the state law is you can drive in Utah for six months um, before you need to get a license. Make sure you stay up to date with the laws in Utah. They are ever changing. Um, so stay up to date on abortion laws, there's gun laws and traffic laws. So depending on your situation, it could be very important to know the different laws. Um, campus, uh, parking. So there is no free parking and you can get ticketed if you do not pay for parking. So make sure you get a parking pass if you have a car. It is a dry campus, which means you are not allowed to drink alcohol um, on this campus, except in very special occasions. There are a few areas on campus where they do throw some events with alcohol, but in general, it is a dry campus. And 
federal law in the entire United States, you must be 21 or older to drink anywhere in the U.S. Um, so if you are 21 and older, make sure you carry your ID everywhere you go. Even if you're uh, 50 years old and you have gray hair, they're still going to ID you to get into restaurants and bars. So make sure um, that you bring your ID everywhere. And of course, it is illegal to drink while driving. It's also illegal to drink um, before riding your bicycle um, and in public places. So there are a lot of different options and stores to buy your food in Salt Lake City. Um, these are some common grocery stores that I use. I also listed a bunch of different ethnic grocery stores on that tricks and tips document that I handed to you, the resource guide. Um, so you can take a look there as well. But in general, these are a few of the main grocery stores that people in Salt Lake City use. There's Whole Foods, which is all organic. It is very expensive. You'll see in the top right-hand corner of the screen, um, all of that really fancy, nice produce. It is very beautiful and it is um, very good produce, but it's also very expensive. Um, but if you want all organic, uh, um, that's a great place to go. Smith's is a very general grocery store. You can find most of what you're looking for. They have a few ethnic sections, um, including an Asian aisle and Mexican food, but you probably won't find everything from your home country, but you'll find at least a few items. Um, Smith's is decently priced, and it's a good place to go to find really anything you're looking for. Trader Joe's. Uh, I think that this is a really great place to go, especially if you're in college, because there are a lot of pre-prepared meals which are decently healthy. There's a lot of organic food. It's not outsourced, so they... Um, the, the food comes directly from Trader Joe's, uh, which makes it a lot less expensive. So Trader Joe's is a really good option for you if you don't have a lot of time to cook and you want some pre-made meals. Costco and Sam's Club, that's all the way at the bottom, that picture. You'll see it. it's huge bulk items. Now, this is really great if you are living with a family or a lot of students and you all want to share, um, you can get pretty good deals at Sam Clubs or Sam's Club or Costco. But you will need a membership. So you'll need to pay I, it's some sort of monthly fee. Um, but you can usually find someone who already has the membership. And there are local farmers markets. Uh, this is great. It's a great way to get outside to meet people. Um, to know kind of what's what the crops are here in Salt Lake, what people can grow. Um, you can usually get different kinds of baked goods or honey. Um, there are crafts. So even if you don't go there to get your groceries, it's still a good experience to go to a local farmer's market. Food continuing, um, make sure you bring your ID everywhere. You can get discounts with your ID. Um, but with that being said, also be careful with fast food. It's very cheap and easy to get fast food. Um, like most fast food places, you can get, I think Taco Bell, a burrito for $2 or maybe a cheeseburger at McDonald's. Um, but this food is not, good for you and it can't really sustain you for your studies um, and for your time in the United States. Uh, and just to let you know that the food here is not necessarily the same as in your home country. Even a cheeseburger from McDonald's here and a cheeseburger from your home country, it's going to be made differently. 
So in the U.S. in the 1970s, there was a corn subsidy and um, it, it made it so farmers could grow corn and earn more money. The idea was that uh, per square acre, you can get more food out of corn than anything else. Now with that came a lot of corn production and a lot of corn growing. And now most things are made out of corn and not your normal type of corn. It has a lot less protein and more sugar and fats in it. Um, and it's very processed. So our cows eat a lot of corn. A lot of the food that you see in the grocery stores are made of corn. Even our sugar is processed and made of corn. So be very careful with eating out a lot um, and fast food and so on. Uh, some good movies to learn about food. There's Super Size Me, there's Food Incorporated, and there is King Corn. But it's a good idea to you know shop at Trader Joe's or um, go to different grocery stores and make very simple meals for yourself if you can. Food continuing. Um, other things to note, the water is drinkable straight from the tap. Uh, it does have some minerals in it, so using a filter is um, advised, but you can drink water straight from the tap. As far as our meals here, it might be a surprise to some of you, but lunch is not the main meal of the day. Uh, it's actually dinner in the United States. So a lot of celebrations um, or going out with friends, it will revolve around dinner and not lunch. Um, so if you can see here, you kind of have your general breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, so dinner is the heartier meal of the day. And even though you see a picture of waffles and a, like a nice sandwich here on a plate, a lot of times with breakfast and lunch in the US, it's a very fast meal. So you might eat, uh, you know, a piece of pizza or a sandwich or maybe some sort of pasta salad really quick in between meetings for lunch. And your breakfast might be a protein bar. Um, but in general, dinner is the main meal of the day. And when you go out to eat and you go to the grocery stores, there are all sorts of different options depending on your dietary needs. There's vegetarian. There is vegan. Um, there's also, uh, I've had a lot of Indian students, so there's veg and non-veg. So vegetarian here in the U.S., you would still eat eggs. Um, but in India, uh, eggs are not included in the vegetarian diet. So just so you're aware, if you order vegetarian here in the U.S., um, that will, it is possible there are eggs in it. So let's go ahead and start the section, how to. So you're probably wondering, how am I going to find a place to live? How am I going to uh, buy furniture and fill my apartment with furniture? Um, so hopefully I can help you out a little bit here. So IS International Student Services, they have a very comprehensive website that they just um, updated. You have student housing um, and graduate apartments, which are on campus. And then you also have some off campus, which are Facebook Marketplace and KSL. That is in your resource sheet that I, I gave to you all. And I'll hand that out again uh, near the end of the presentation if some of you are arriving a bit late. Um, but yes, so it's, the on-campus is student house, housing and graduate apartments. Graduate apartments are great if you have a family or you would like your own private room. The student housing is more for undergraduate. It's more of a dorm setup. So you'll be sharing a room with somebody else or you'll have a bit of a smaller room with shared bathrooms. If you want to live off campus, there's Facebook KSL. I did also put a link in that handout talking about scammers, people can scam you, especially if you're not here in Utah. So if you find a really good deal on Facebook or KSL, 
um, and they want you to give you them some money up front uh, before you see the place or before you meet them, I would not recommend that. I would recommend waiting until you arrive here. At the very least, set up a video call with the people who are offering the housing to make sure that it's legitimate and they can show you around the apartment or the housing um, before you send any money over. Okay, how to buy furniture. So there are quite a few options here in the US. You can get things shipped directly to you uh, through Amazon. Amazon, it, everybody uses it here. It's pretty common. If you have a membership, you can get your items within only a few days, sometimes the same day, which is still pretty crazy to me, um, but they'll ship it right to your door. There's also Ikea, where you can get pretty inexpensive furniture. Um, you will need to go to the Ikea store to pick that up. And the issue with Amazon and Ikea is you do need to build this furniture yourself. And it can be pretty frustrating. And it can take multiple hours sometimes. So if that's not in your agenda, I wouldn't recommend shopping Amazon or Ikea, though if you don't have a car and you need furniture, Amazon's a great choice because they ship it right to you. Just know you will need to set aside some time to put together your furniture. Um, and uh, it does take, take some, some skill and some time. You'll see this picture up, up top, that's a thrift store. So this is very common in the US. It's very special to the United States. In the US, uh, people usually upgrade their furniture and upgrade their daily items frequently. Um, so their older items, they will get rid of and send to a thrift store. So they get rid of it for free. Thrift store will pick it up for them. Um, and then you can get a really good deal on lightly used furniture, um, I don't know, they have everything, microwaves, radios, um, clothes, kind of whatever you need, as long as you're okay with used items, you can get a really good deal. I think I, in college, I set up my living room for about a $100 um, with a couch and a table and some chairs. So you can do, you can get uh, furniture very cheap at thrift stores. Also, your uh, very basic general markets to get furniture from, you can go to Target and Walmart. They also have food. And they have, uh, you know, jackets and clothes and pretty much everything you can think of. Uh, again, for daily items, you know, Target, Walmart. Um, we There's also a mall fashion place uh, where you can actually take the train there. So once you get your train, once you get your ID, you can use that to take the train to Fashion Place Mall. They have all different kinds of clothes stores um, and, you know, you can get perfumes or shoes or kind of whatever you're looking for. It's, it's your basic mall. And then most of the places I mentioned before, you can also get daily items like Smith's, Costco, Amazon, thrift stores, and so on. I know a lot of international students, um, they're worried about the winter here. So many of you might come from warmer climates and um, you're worried about the snow. Yeah, so don't worry too much about the cold weather. Uh, the train, it has heat in the train. There's heat in the school. There's uh, hopefully gonna be some heat at your house or wherever you're living. Um, so it, it it's not gonna be, you're not gonna be too cold for more than 15, 20 minutes. Trains, uh, they have a specific time that they come by. Um, so you can plan it out uh, accordingly so that you don't have a really long commute out in the cold. But in general, you will be outside. Um, and some days it will be pretty cold and it will be snowing. Um, so you'll want to make sure that you have, um, you know, your basic clothing. So we have a hat, uh, your gloves, jacket, warm socks, 
and boots. You don't need to get all of these things before you come here. You can also pick these up at a thrift store or um, there are other some other places you can pick this stuff up at. Like uh, Ross is a really good store to get cheap clothing. Um, and then some optional things that I like. Uh, scarf, something to wrap around your neck. Long johns, which are long underwear. And then wool sweater. So really anything wool is great because even if it gets wet, it stays warm. And last but not least, some on-campus resources. Um, you have a lot of different things that are there for you for free. So make sure you take advantage of that. Um, I honestly wish I used more of the free resources when I came to the university. Um, but here are just a few that I can name. There is a Center for Disability and Access, which is free. There's the Center Student for Wellness, which will encompass um, a lot of different areas now at the university. Um, there's Child Care Coordinating Office, which you can get very affordable child care. One of my favorite is Outdoor Adventures and Equipment Rental. You can get skis, tents, sleeping bags, all different kinds of gear for a very low cost. Also, if you don't have a car, they do different trips um, where I, I, they have vans and they'll take people out on different adventures, hiking and backpacking and all different kinds of outdoor activities. There's also a personal money management center, student life center. So if you see that picture that has a swimming pool you got a gym, basketball court, even a rock climbing wall. It's pretty amazing. Um, and it's completely free to you. So I, I would recommend using it. Um, why not? You also have a free counseling center. There are free mindfulness clinics, uh, veteran student support center. And with the counseling center, um, it is free. And, you know, counseling usually costs hundred to two hundred dollars per session and this is free to you so it's a really great resource you also have 24 7 support in case you're in a crisis and that is on our sheet the the handout um more resources international student services they work with visas so all of your uh student visa concerns you can reach out directly to them they uh, will support you with CPT, OPT, your I-20. So any con questions concerning that. And career services. Career services, uh, they usually work with you um, about a year after your program. I know that David Eccles School of Business, we offer career services. Um, and I think most departments offer career services. We, the David Eccles School, we are inviting all students to this job fair. It's uh, part-time and on-campus jobs. So many of you cannot start off-campus job until your third semester. So you need to be at the university two semesters and then you can start off-campus. But you can work on campus up to 20 hours right away. So there will be a job fair. I believe August 21st is Wednesday. That's going to be 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the union, the student union, which is the main building where all the events happen. Um, so be sure to check that out if you're looking for uh, a job and to make some extra income. Okay, that was a lot of me talking. Thanks for, for joining. I am going to attach that document one more time with uh, the resources from this presentation. So that's all of your uh, links um, that we discussed, uh, as well as um, the different applications that you can use and download. So there's that again. Looks like our team has been good at answering questions. So do you all have 
any questions uh, for us today? Okay, uh, looks like most of the questions have been answered, which is wonderful. Uh, we got one question open. How strict is move-in time? Say I arrive at 12 p.m., uh, but only move in until 5. Uh, can I go somewhere with my luggage? That's a good question. Um, and it, it just kind of depends. So I, I'm guessing this is more like Airbnb. So it's not uh, your like semi-permanent housing where you'll, you're signing a six month to year contract. But usually if you reach out to these different places um, at Airbnb, they can sometimes accommodate you for an earlier check-in. If not, you might um, need to hang out. I would hang out maybe at a coffee shop close by. Uh, if there is one, uh, you might need to hang out at the airport. Uh, it just kind of depends. But I would certainly reach out to your Airbnb host or whoever the host might be and see if you can get an earlier check-in. Looks like we have an I-20 question, if Tiffany wants to answer this one. So I think that um, there's a student who talked about uh, needing a wet ink signature on their I-20 to complete the I-9 employment verification. Um, so in this case, um, it would seem like you maybe don't have a social security card. Um, if you don't, you will need to uh, be reaching out to our office and um, logging into UAtlas to request uh, what's called a social security um, letter that you'll take to that office uh, to get the social security card. Uh, in regard to the wet ink I-20, so we don't usually issue wet ink I-20s just because we are legally allowed to give a digital signature on the form. So the I-20 form you should have received from admissions. Um, it does have a digital signature, but that is legally allowed for us uh, to issue and is acceptable um, within the U.S. Uh, as a legitimate signature. So you shouldn't have a uh, it shouldn't be an issue, um, but if you do have like a someone who's giving you kind of made trouble about it, um, feel free to loop in our office um, in any kind of communication uh, you're having um, or any kind of complication with the HR representative you're working with uh, within your department. So our email is international at utah.edu. So um, yeah, feel free to loop us in um, if you are having an issue with that. But in general, um, that should be acceptable, whichever I-20 you got from admissions. Thanks, Tiffany. Um, so we have uh, another question which is, uh, da, 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 da. oh, it looks like it was already answered. Um, <laughs> looks like Tiffany's answering that. So we have a lot of IS questions. Um, there's also an earlier question about uh, the Student Life Center. And if um, they wanted to bring a guest, I'll just send this to everyone that this is the Student Life Center membership. So it's free to students. It looks like it's $8 a day for guests. I'm not sure if they also offer memberships to spouses. We have Tiffany answering some questions. You can also just, if it's easier, Tiffany, you can speak you can speak or you can write them, whatever you feel like doing. Uh, 
I think uh, Walid has a question. So um, they've asked uh, who they should contact in IOS when clearing uh, immigration. So for our office, um, the main requirement for new students who are incoming students um, is to complete an immigration check-in in UATLAS. So you all should have been receiving emails from our orientation coordinator, Daniel Debray, um, regarding orientation requirements. So uh, if you haven't done so already, um, please uh, log into UATLAS and familiarize yourself with that portal, just because that will be the portal where you'll be basically communicating to our office and requesting certain things. And so all students will eventually uh, need to, you know, submit certain requests in there eventually throughout your program. Um, and the first one will be the immigration check-in. So um, once you arrive in the U.S., there's a post-arrival section on the immigration check-in, and there's also a pre-arrival section on the immigration check-in. So um, currently, um, you all are likely still in your home countries, or maybe there are some students who are um, maybe here in the U.S. already. Um, but for most of you, um, you're likely outside of the U.S. Um, you are able to already complete the pre-arrival uh, portion of the immigration check-in in UATLAS. Uh, so feel free to do that already. Um, but the post-arrival section, again, um, it will only be completed once you arrive in the U.S., and are physically here. Um, that's just because uh, there's certain information like your address, uh, which you might not know already. You'll, you'll likely only know that information once you arrive. Um, there's also other documentation regarding your entry into the US that will be asked of you um, to submit once you're here physically. So uh, feel free to wait on completing that post-arrival portion of the immigration check-in until you arrive in the U.S. Um, other than completing that immigration check-in, um, you don't need to contact us directly unless you have a concern or an issue um, when you're entering the U.S. Um, and one other thing regarding orientation requirements, um, please remember to attend the mandatory orientation session. Uh, so you all should have uh, signed up for an orientation session um, that will be hosted by our office where we will go over all of your immigration requirements for your visa. So um, other than the immigration check-in and attending orientation by our office, uh, those are the main requirements and things um, that you'll need to do. But other than that, um, only if you run into, you know, more complex issues, uh, you don't need to contact us directly. <clears throat> Thanks, Tiffany. Uh, it seems like there's another question about obtaining the Utah driver's license. So um, let me just share that link with everybody in the main chat. Um, I think I had sent it to one of the students in the answered uh, Q&A section, but um, there are a few documents that you'll need to apply for a driver's license as an international student. Um, so you should first follow this guideline that I'm gonna share. Um, and then you will go to the physical um, DNV. Um, so the DMV is where you get a driver's license. And they will let you know if um, all of the documents you presented them are fine and allow you to get a driver's license. Um, as long as you do obtain, uh, so let me see. I, I sent the link in the chat. So um, that is our driver's license guide. 
Um, you do need a unexpired passport. Um, you need an I-94 document. So you can download your I-94 online. Um, you'll only want to do that until you arrive in the U.S. because the I-94 form, it is your departures and entries into the U.S. So um, if you haven't entered the U.S. Uh, yet, you, you likely will not have a record on your I-94 um, until you arrive here. So uh, make sure to wait on that until you're physically here. Um, you'll need your I-20 form. Your form I-20 that you received from admissions, that is a valid I-20. Um, it is valid for up to one year from the date it was issued to you. Um, you will also need a letter uh, from the Social Security office if you do not have a Social Security card. Um, if you do have a Social Security card or you're planning to apply for one, um, you would first need to apply for your Social Security card uh, before applying for the driver's license, if that makes sense. And then um, you will need uh, two documents to verify your Utah address. So um, you will also need to have your uh, address, you know, figured out, you know, where you're going to live. Um, your living situation will need to be set um, at the time when you're applying for a driver's license, just because the address that you provide them is where they're going to contact you. Um, and so for the government, it is really important uh, that you provide the right address where you're going to be living um, so that they know where you are, they know how to contact you. Um, and then you do need a proof of driving experience. Uh, so if you have your home country's driver's license or proof that you completed a driver's education course in Utah, uh, those are both valid um, forms of evidence to prove that you have experienced driving. <clears throat> so I hope that helps a little bit, um, but in regard to applying for the driver's license, just go with uh, go through our guide uh, that I shared in the chat. And then if you have any issues, um, once you're applying for the actual license at the uh, DMV, um, you can reach out to our office, but likely it should be fine as long as everything, uh, all of the documents that are listed on the guide were provided and they're valid. Awesome. Thank you. I think we will um, close it up now because it is 10 o'clock and I know that you probably have some meetings to get to. And um, But thanks so much, Tiffany, for your help. Uh, Hannah has already left. Um, thanks, Hannah. Thank you, Austin. And thank you to everybody who attended today. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, please download that, that sheet for the resources. And we look forward to meeting all of you. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you are.